Hello everybody, Lawrence Fleming here. I'm putting together a little impromptu video because this is the night before my moving day tomorrow. I've already made a video for tomorrow, but I don't have one for Saturday. Well, I have one that I've outlined, but I gotta sit down and have a nice quiet place. And I haven't had that for a couple of days. We've had some people in with dogs and kids and they're noisy. And I'm glad they're there having a good time. But it doesn't help to find a quiet place with God or a good place to record a video. My knees bother me a little bit, so I'm not hiking as much. I'm taking a short hike here, just down from my camp down to the water. It's about an eighth of a mile, so it's not too bad. So anyhow, I have a quick answer to somebody's question about the importance of Israel and Jerusalem. We're in the Gentile age, so this is focusing on Christians and the church. We're about to switch back to the 70th week of Daniel, and when we do, the focus is entirely on the Jews. There will be a rapture. So we won't be here. There will be Christians coming around after that, but they won't have the luxury of escaping some of the things that are going to go on. So anyhow, when it switches back to them, it's going to switch back to needing a temple. The Jews are looking for a temple. The Arabs are looking for a temple. One's looking for a Messiah, the other one's looking for a spiritual leader, but not God. The Arabs don't think he's God, but they do think he is a prophet and a spiritual leader, so they're looking for him too. In comes the Antichrist. He's going to make them both very happy. He's going to appear to be both. And when he's there, they're both going to welcome him with open arms. And that's how he's going to swing the peace treaty and the building of the temple. Now, the Dome of the Rock, when they finally get right down to it, they're going to have to admit that it is it was built as a shrine, yes, but a shrine for the temple. Nothing to do with Islam. So anyhow, things are getting ready to kick off over there. I don't think that we're going to see a whole lot because of the wars and rumors of wars. I think the wars are going to be later on. Wars would be devastating. It would kill a lot of a lot of Jews. So I don't think that we're going to see anything from them on that. Not right away. Nothing big. I mean, it may seem threatening, but it's not going to be dangerous for Israel. Okay. That's not a very long video, but... What I'm getting ready to do, uh, my Starlink is in. I have to go pick it up. The fundraising is going good. I really appreciate that. We're over halfway. And we still need to do a little bit because I had to pay for it up front. So I need to get some of that money back. That's my rent money, if you will. I pay for camping. Anyhow, when I get that fully up and running and tested and know how to use it, then I'm going to start splitting my videos up. I'll do a simple video for YouTube where I'll cover the basics, but if you want the detail, you're gonna to have to go over to Rumble. Uh, I can't do it any other way because YouTube's just being a pain. So that's what we're gonna do, but there'll be enough there. If you just wanna stay on YouTube, there'll be enough for you to get out of each video. But if you want the details more, and mentioning names that I can't do on YouTube, you're going to have to go to Rumble. And I'll have a link. You don't have to watch them both. All right. I may add to this, but right now I'm going to go ahead and end it. I'll talk to you soon. Sometimes it's fun to see what kind of footage I can get walking through these trees shooting straight up at the trees. 
there are gaps. There's plenty of areas I can get out from the trees, but it's kind of fun to look at that. All right, and here I am. I'm continuing to do my hodgepodge video because the time will be spent tomorrow trying to get set up, break down and set up. <clears throat> and tomorrow is a rain day on top of that. So I'm hoping that I can get everything packed up before the rain hits hard or in between a rain gap, it doesn't matter. I'd rather pack it away dry, but it's going right to a new campsite so we can be wet. If you're taking it home, you got to let it sit out and dry. You don't pack things away wet. they get mold. But if you're going right to a new campsite, no big deal. I'm going back over to my swing by the river. All right, so as we're looking at everything going on in the world, there's very little that has to happen to move to the next phase. When we start the 70th week, really we should be starting it with the Antichrist. So it's got to be real close to his time to get into that, because as soon as it starts, we're out of here. We can't be here for the Antichrist. We shouldn't be here as the church. We need to be out of here. So our rapture is tied to the front end of this, as free trip as you can get. <clears throat> like I said, I don't know that there's going to be a war that's going to do any damage in Israel. They've got to have a place to build a temple. Ah, okay, I'm... I'm seated in my swing. Yeah, if you destroy Jerusalem, there's no place to build a temple, then we can't go on. Satan's won. So it's not going to happen. This is relaxing. There's no wind. I know sometimes the wind comes up and I'm not prepared. And I can't help it. I'm sorry. I have a microphone for when the wind comes up, but if it starts off like this, it's just beautiful, calm. And I don't think to grab it before I take off on a walk. <clears throat> I guess I should carry it with me just in case. I'm anxious to find out what the Wi-Fi range is on my Starlink when I get it turned on. Fingers crossed tomorrow maybe. We'll have to see what comes up. In any case, we're waiting for the last few things to drop. This banking collapse is on purpose is to consolidate. They want fewer number of banks to be working with when we get right down to it. They don't want small banks. Small banks can give you a personalized service. They don't want that. They want you under the big thumb of the big bank, which is going to be controlled by the harlot and the Antichrist initially. And you say, well, how can they be working together? You got seven heads and ten horns. That's the harlot and the beast. Look them up in Revelation when they describe them. So anyhow, in that mix is the Antichrist, but he's not the big A Antichrist yet. That doesn't happen until he dies and gets taken over by the demon. Then he's the big, big, big A Antichrist. And the world's looking for him. We would recognize him. We have to be out of here. But it doesn't have anything to do with how tough things are, so be careful. Every generation has had something going on that's tough. If you go all the way back to the first and second century, they were lucky to survive it. Christians were. We've had times where it was where it was tough, but it hasn't been that bad, I don't think, since then. But every generation has to deal with something. And I think every generation has a little a, little a antichrist in the wings just in case. Now people can go and point at things and say, oh, this guy's evil and this guy's evil and this guy's evil. He must be the antichrist. The antichrist is not going to appear evil to start with. He's going to appear like Christ to start with. He doesn't turn evil to halfway through. The 
70th week. The first half, the world is going to welcome him, thinking that he really is the Messiah. The Jews are going to welcome him. The Muslims are going to welcome him. And the rest of the world is going to kind of go along. Sure, let's have God down here and fix everything. If he can solve the problem between the Jews and the Muslims, then maybe he can solve every other problem on the world front. So they are probably accept him until the Jews figure it out. When he desecrates the temple, they know it's not him. They know that it will be the Antichrist, and they will remember. And the 144,000, which I'm beginning to think are in the second half, along with the two witnesses. I think when they come, they're going to push the envelope and tell the Jews that they've been wrong, and they're going to probably believe it this time. Just be patient. Be patient and keep helping people. Find someone every day to help. Even if you cannot talk to them about God, be helpful and let them know that you're helping because God is helping you in your life and you're wanting to share. They may want to know about that more about that later. You're planting seeds. It just means you don't you don't plant seeds by walking through the field dragging your feet. You got to be plowing into the ground seeing what you can turn up. There may be rocks every once in a while. Kick them out of the way. If you're lucky, you've got motorized plows. But they used to do it with horses. So you can just plow the ground and somebody else can come in and plant the seeds if you're not into that. That's okay. They need someone to plow, somebody to plant the seeds, somebody to harvest later on. You can break every one of those tasks up. You don't have to do everything. And the only one that's really going to benefit and do the most is going to be the Spirit of God anyway. You can't bring anybody to God. Only the Spirit can. All you can do is walk them up to the door and say, Here, stand at the door and knock. And if you are seeking Jesus, here, open the door and let you in. But you can't lead them to, to heaven. You can walk with them. But that's why you have to have the Spirit working well, which means you've got to make sure that your life is working correctly, as close as you can to God, and as sin-free as you can make it. And we can't be perfectly sin-free, I understand that. Sin, confess it to Jesus, boom, it's done. Sin, confess it to Jesus, boom, continue on. Don't stop, don't sulk. Pray if you need to a little bit about the sin so that it can be a less of a burden on you, but don't worry about it. We've, we've got, when they asked him how many times to forgive your neighbor, <clears throat> seven times, 70 times seven. It's basically a lot. So if that's what he's telling us to do for our neighbor, what's he going to do for us? We're forgiven. And it doesn't matter how many times in the past you've done it. If you ask for forgiveness this time, then the only sin you've ever committed is the one you just need to confess. The rest of them are gone. They're hidden. Never to be brought up again. So if you sin ten times, the only one you're focusing on is the first one. Don't let the other nine drag you down. They're gone if you confess them. Okay, I'm going to post this. This will be a, a relatively short video. Once I get my Starlink up, I'm going to try to do uh, a live broadcast, and then I'm going to try to find out uh, what kind of format's going to work best. I want everybody to be happy, okay? <clears throat> I've got limitations of what I can do on YouTube, and I'm not going to get fined. So I may not, and I don't have any control of it, they may decide they want to find me because they don't like the color of my shirt. 
I have no control over that, so I've got to be careful. But I will do a completer message on Rumble. I'm uh, sorry that I haven't been able to put anything up on Patreon. I'm going to work on that as well. You guys deserve extra because that's what you're, you're doing. You're supporting the ministry. I need to give you good videos too. I just haven't been able to do it. The limitation of the bandwidth has been a problem. If Starlink fixes all that, I got to fix all my channels. And then I got to see if I can get the ones done that need to be on Rumble where I can talk freely. Okay, until we meet in the clouds, be ready. It could be any time. And don't forget my fundraiser. We're over halfway, so let's keep it going. I need your help. And you can be part of this ministry by helping. And again, thank you to the Patreons. God bless. These are some of the critters you find here. Red fox, not the actor. Yeah, you can find some bees. You have to be careful. <laughs> These owls, you can hear them hooting at night. Bobcats. Seen a couple of possums. And there's a beaver, there's a beaver dam that's visible off of one of the trails, but they don't show where the deer. I'm in the uh, visitor center, so you can do canoeing or kayaking or backpacking. And they have supplies and stuff. And we have a box turtle somewhere. I think he's back in there in that dark little room. But they have everything you need when you get out and you can come get stuff here. Get yourself a small tent.